Hello everyone and welcome back to Henke Sesui for another episode of Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. In the last episode I was talking all about how I was, all these plans I had for the future in, order, in um, getting a, a system up and running out here on this planet that was going to make blue circuits and holmanite in much much larger quantities in order to, uh, to ship them out by rocket. And um, well, spoilers up front, that's just what I've been doing. So let's have a bit of a look at what we've got here. This is a fairly mammoth undertaking here, and it's um, really stretching the um, the levels of the power that I've got on this planet. So I've done all, a few little tricks here and there to try and to try and maximise that. But essentially, what we've got is, as you can see, there's a sort of a pattern going on here. We've got this sort of in single unit worth of machinery, and that's that's enough to take essentially to fill one saving thank you <laughs> to fill one belt here with with the product or was it one no it was this belt here that was the absolute that was limiting factor and that's why it's in chunks of this size the sort of the three pulverizers and everything that runs on from there so that's taking in the original um holmanite ore crushing it then washing it sorting the stone out of it like that then taking it up here, powd uh, powdering it. What are we doing here? We're making a powder, which oh yes, that involves the uh, the cation beads that we pass through it through the system here. And then these get you have lots and lots of sort of byproducts here. So as you can see, we're passing through. We're taking in the um, the washed holmanite and the cation beads, but it's also passing out washed holmanite cation beads, but also sand and the holmanite powder. So there's a sort of a a big level of churn going on there of things which go round and round. So that's why I've got this one here that pulls out the powder, then another one that pulls out. The beads and um all oh right yeah this, this, so this sorts the beads onto one side and the remaining uh unwashed onto the other and the sand as well then the sand is pulled out here and then dumped onto a belt to be got rid of and that's then passed round here and it goes round the cycle again and again and again until eventually it gets used up now there's some funny business going on here with the um uh with the um what do you call it the productivity modules in these in these things because when this fills up, I'm fairly sure it's, it outputs a full set of everything. So we're getting an extra, what is it on these machines? We're getting an extra, um, where, where, oh yeah, 24% productivity. So every, so one in every four times, essentially, it'll spit out an extra set of stuff. Um, and that means because we're, because it's producing a 50% chance of extra cation and, um, holmanite, as well as the, um, uh, then it means for every four times it runs it will in theory produce two just from the recipe um, and then the extra one will produce an extra um, an extra 50% so we've got two and a half coming out for every four times it runs so that means I think that is significantly reducing the amount of load on these machines compared to if we were actually just running the whole thing as normal um, it then produces huge amounts of sand as I said then, you then cook the, uh, the powder into ingots and the ingots get passed off to the rocket and I've got and, and so and so that, as I said, this belt in the middle here is, the, is effectively the limiting factor. That is as much as you can cram on a single belt. So all the rest of it is based around that. And that's why I have it split into these modules. And these four modules in this direction are enough to, I believe, use an entire um, input belt. And then having four of these in parallel, so series and then parallel, is enough to produce... It's not a full belt of, of holmium. Um, we've, we've backed up now because it's been running for long enough while I've been faff faffing around trying to get everything else balanced. But it's pretty close, so it's um, it's close it's close enough. So we filled the rocket up fairly quickly. Uh, one rocket is full. I think yeah, the second rocket is full as well, and that's probably going to blast off to um, wherever it's needed. Once it fills up, we once it fills up with fuel, that's going to be a little while. I'm going to turn that off for the moment because I need to get on this rocket when it does finally go. So as well as that, we've got um, a landing pad here that we can use to bring in the various inputs. So we've got things like, um, there's a couple of things we can't make on this planet. Uh, one is the rocket section. So as you can see, we've got a whole system here set up to deal with those. And the other is vulcanite. Um, and we've actually run out of vulcanite, which is a bit of a problem because it's, it's needed in several places, but this isn't empty yet. So I'm gonna have to deal with that. Uh, but it's essentially this, um, this means we now, there are there are various different various different inputs required here. So there's the um, obviously there's the holmanite ore, but you also need to be pumping in steam and sulfuric acid and and some water as well. And so those are all being dealt with down here. We've got the standard series of um, 
oil refineries, making plastics. Uh, oh yeah, they need plastic as well. I forgot, about, I forgot to mention that. And sulfur to turn into the sulfuric acid. So this is all all pretty standard. Oh, and some iron as well for the sulfuric acid. And so we've got the standard set of trains. Ignore the way this railway does weird things here. It's because I made a mistake when I was setting things up, and the easiest way to do it was to flip all the stations around. <laughs> and that meant I then had to flip the um, the inputs and outputs around as well, which is why they're a bit... It's a bit horrible. Let's not look at that anymore. So this process also has a couple of byproducts. Uh, I, I mentioned the stone that comes out of it and, and the sand that comes out of this stage. The sand goes onto these belts here and is fed down into all of these furnaces which will turn it into glass and I do need to ship this glass off to somewhere um, as soon as possible because there's a crazy amount of it. Uh, some of it can go to, some of it can perhaps go to orbit, some of it maybe, I think I'm going to start shipping it to Norvis it's just as a way of getting rid of it because I don't know what else to do with it and then we can turn it into the, uh, the la uh, low density structures that I was talking about in the last episode. The stone is fed up here into the um, into another set of smelting machines here which to, uh, which cook it into, into bricks. These bricks are then passed up and they're turned into green circuits and the green circuits are, are also then turned into red circuits and both of those are turned into blue circuits. And the blue circuits, as you might remember, was the whole reason I came here and started doing this in the first place. Because if you, if you use holmanite as well, then you can use a recipe that's about twice as efficient. Now, there's a little bit of a problem here. You can no may notice that the green circuits aren't really being produced in the sort of numbers we'd want them to. Now, all these machines have stopped, and that's because we've run out of stone bricks coming in. So the whole thing is on a fairly tentative balance between all the different things. So as long as these, as long as all of the holmanite production is running, we can, as long as the holmanite production is running, we can produce the stone that goes up the belt, goes into here, is smelted, is cooked into bricks, and is fed in here to make circuits, and then we can make all of the circuits we need. That's fine. If the um, if the stone if, if these machines stop because the holmanite is full or something like that, then it starts to cause problems. All of it um, we run out of stone. These machines stop and it, it stops working. Additionally, so that's what that's why it stopped now because this this rocket is full, so we don't need any more holmanite. Uh, holmium, sorry. Holmanite is the ore. Hol holmium is the metal. And then over here we've got the same sort of problem with the glass. When that fills up. It stops using the sand up, so again it backs up and it stops working. So it is a bit of a tricky balancing act. Um, I'm hoping that once, I if I start shipping the glass off to Norvis, which I need to put in the landing pad for, then that's going to get rid of get through the glass fast enough, because it can all just be dumped straight into the uh, the processing for the um, into the processing for the for the lo uh, low density structures. And I think that should enable me to get through an enormous quantity of glass quite quickly. It's going to be a bit of a waste of fuel to go over there, but I need to take, I need to do something with it. I can't just leave it here. I suppose the alternative is to start making low density structures here, which would mean um, plastic and um, steel, I think, as well. No, the other recipe, please. Uh, glass, co copper, steel, and plastic. So these are all things I can make on this planet. I could make my low density structures here as well, uh, but it's all just sort of, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a lot of extra stuff to put on this planet and this planet is already st already struggling for power a bit as we can well we can't see looking at these but if i zoom out a bit yeah you can see this the flat bit on the top of the um power consumption there uh, and that's because i that's because it was absolutely maxed out normally you get this sort of little bit of noise going on even when it's fairly flat and that was just showing that i just didn't have enough power and that's even though i put in some of the a few of these shiny new um, solar panels as well so it is struggling a little bit but it's it's basically okay um, so yeah, that is the main thing. In fact, that is it. That is entirely in the entirety of what I've been doing since the last episode. There's been actually quite a lot of work to get this up and running. So I designed the um, this this system in uh, in Creative Mod before I came out here. Made sure that all, it was all fairly balanced with all the inputs and in, in, inputs together, and and it, in, in it, it basically it consumed an entire input belt, and I had stuff to do with the output. And it was working quite well, so I, made, so I made a blueprint out of it. And one of the mods I've installed fairly recently allows me to select a logistics item like um, like one of these chests, for example. And I can then drop a blueprint into it using this. So I could take a blueprint, drop it in here, and it will set up in the logistics chest it will set up a request for all the things that are in that blueprint and that was extremely useful because it meant I just did that a couple of times over because I needed four of them and waited for all the stuff to appear in the chest and then loaded it into the rock and then put it and set the insert again to load it into the rocket the problem was the um, the stuff in the recipe was too much to fit in a single chest so I had to sort of 
faff around with it a little bit, but that wasn't too bad. I, I, did, I did manage to get that working and eventually managed to get all, uh, pretty much all the stuff I needed into the into the rocket. Um, I then came off to, uh, oh, and I did the same with the uh, the blueprint for the blue circuit making as well. I then came off, back off to um, Henke Sesui and realised there were quite a few things that I was missing. I'd, I'd miscounted or I'd been impatient waiting for things to fill up and that sort of thing. So I just didn't have all of the stuff I needed. So I got to it building it anyway. Got quite a lot of that done and then and then had another rocket come out with the remaining things that I needed. So so I've now managed to finish it off. And then it occurred to me that I hadn't really thought about the byproducts. So the stone and the um, and, and, and the sand, they needed to be dealt with and have to do something with those. And then there's and then there was also all of the other inputs, things like the copper and stuff. I'd just gone from I'd just built up all of essentially I'd built up all of this stuff. So the, the circuit making and all of the holmium making and just assumed I could shove in all of the inputs and do something with all of the outputs. Uh, which is why all of this stuff in here is a little bit squeezed in, uh, a little bit sort of slapped on as an afterthought. Um, but that said, it is now working. <clears throat> I, but I accept that I do need to do something with the glass. And and to be honest, to some extent, I need to do something with the holmium because it's the lack of holmium usage that's causing the blue circuit production to, uh, to back up because of the stone. I could start digging up stone there are stone patches i could put in another station in here and have another belt feeding stone in and and just use what's coming out of here as a priority but it's really it's, it's kind of difficult to balance that um I mean, i've got this section up here which perhaps shouldn't be there maybe it should be there maybe there just needs to be some sort of buffering system instead um but the idea was that i'd i'd um just accumulate i i'd use this as an overflow so any excess stone i'd crush smelt into glass and put into the rocket to get again to get rid of it um but then i then i started to run out so sometimes i had too much sometimes i had too little it was a it was a, a tricky tricky balancing act and I, I don't feel i've entirely got it right but then it is working just about well enough and i don't have an enormous need for blue circuits at the moment so i think i'm just going to leave it for now see how it goes see how the sort of the amounts of the different resource usages goes to go together and see see how well balanced it is um, I did also shove in an extra uh, nuclear power plant down here. That was absolutely vital, as I mentioned, because I just didn't have anything like enough power. Uh, the one nuclear plant was producing about 400 megawatts. The second one is producing another 400, and then I think these are the solar panels are producing the, the other whatever that is on the top of it. Um, I stuck in a couple of extra mines down here because I didn't want to run out of copper or holmium because I was aware I was going to get through quite a lot of those, making the uh, making all the circuits and making all of the uh, the holmium to to be sh shipped off. And now this is going to then be sent off to space. So if we have a look, I'll look over at the space station. Over here we've got um, a holmium. Yes, this is holmium. Holmium drop-off uh, landing pad here gets dumped into the landing pad across to here, out of here, down, down the um, down the chute and in, in, into a chest at the bottom. Now one of the most interesting things that happened. So I. I don't know whether you've been uh, whether you, whether you've noticed, but I've actually started doing a bit of streaming as well, which is quite nice because it means when I'm playing, I've got, I get I have people to talk to, people to um, give me suggestions and tell me when I've done something dumb. Sometimes if they notice, um, and also to tell me things I didn't I didn't realise about the about the game, uh, so little things that where where there's extra things you can do that I hadn't, hadn't realised. And one of those, this is going to be very very useful, is you can set up a a landing pad. You can give it a name. And then you can tell a rocket to launch to any landing pad of that name, rather than the one on the specific planet or or in orbit you're talking about. Uh, so looking at this rocket, for example, I can say I can choose a planet, so Norvis in this case, and Vulcanite in. That's where this one goes to by default. Um, okay, good. That's not not full yet. Or alternatively, you can say any landing pad with name, and then pick a landing pad specific name, and it will go to whichever planet has a landing pad of that name that is currently empty. So it's a way of almost doing the LTN type thing, um, or using this train. I suppose actually it's more like using vanilla trains um, with stations that automatically uh, shut themselves when they're full. So any landing pad that's got anything in it at all, like these two, will be closed for business. You won't be able to drop a rocket in there because there's stuff there. It, 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 the rockets won't won't go there. So actually, it turns out I won't be able to take a glass one to to, to the uh, space station. Um, in fact, quite a few of these are, have got stuff in them. So that means I don't need to then do the signal sending because the landing pads do that all by themselves anyway. And I don't need to have cunning setups with loads and loads of different rockets for all the different places I want the things to go to. So, for example, to take another example, on Ganymede, 
i can configure either or both of these rockets to go to just anywhere that needs vulcanite instead of specifying that i want them to go to this one goes to um space station vulcanite this one goes to norvis vulcanite i don't need to do that i can i can i can switch them to i can just set them to go to anywhere where it's needed same with the glass same with the um same with the stone um and that means i can yeah i can do things like starting to ship the um ship the glass to boat to norvis as well uh, because on Norvis we've got, I built up this huge, big smelt, this big smelting area down here. That down here, here we go. This one at the bottom that makes all the glass that goes down to the low density structure production down here. And you can see that's that's chugging away quite nicely, um, and it does get through a lot of glass down here as well as, well as the other as well as the other inputs. And so I could set that to then run off something out, run off. Uh, glass from another planet unless we run out in which case we can then start using this so i think all these things are going to give make it a bit easier to to um, move the stuff around so i think my next project is going to be going around and renaming all re reconfiguring all of the rockets all of the landing pads just to make sure everything goes to where it's supposed to go once i've done that then i can start thinking about what i'm doing in orbit up here i can start thinking about the more advanced sciences i think i'm at the point where i can actually get get my teeth into that and start getting that set up i've got the i've got the um supply of memory cards in theory um i don't seem to have any coming out at the moment that's because we've run out of copper oh yes that's because my train ran out of fuel <laughs> which is a bit of a silly thing i need to put in a, a fueling system in the in the uh, stations up here so i'll probably just run them off coal to be honest because that's here or maybe maybe i'll turn the coal into processed fuel just run that over here load lo and then load all three trains that that's that should be fairly straightforward. This one's going to be a little bit tricky because of all of these underground belts, but I can I can wind it in there. That's that's going to be fine. So that's going to be the plan for the future. I think um, my intention is to uh, do another st to carry on streaming when I'm doing when hopefully when I'm doing interesting things. So in be between between streams, I'm going to try and get all of the. The, the, the rockets configured as I said because that's not going to be particularly exciting and then for the next stream I'll start setting up um, setting up more science and when I once I've got a bit of that done I shall report back for the next video and I hope I hope you'll join me for that so until then thank you for watching and I'll see you next time <laughs>